fresh future it's miss demery here back at it again with another lesson a strong one wink wink i'm super excited to be your teacher today and if this is your first time welcome to fresh future tv if this is not your first time welcome back we're happy to see you again now do y'all like fresh future tv i like fresh future tv so what do you do with something that you like you share it so I need you to send this to one friend like and subscribe to Fresh Future TV so we can continue to be disciples that make disciples script time our scripture for today is Psalm 77 verse 14 let's read it together it says you are the god who does miracles you show your power amongst the nations today we are going to be learning about having faith in god to redeem us from all of our mistakes hey guys and girls and everybody it's minister tiffany here and i'm just jumping in to let you know that we are going to do a super cool experiment so we want you to check it out. It's called the imploding can. And this experiment is going to represent how something was taken away from another thing. And you'll get more of what I'm talking about once Ms. Dimry teaches you the super cool lesson. So enjoy the experiment and let's get back to it. The equipment and ingredients you're gonna need for this episode include an empty can, a large bowl, a set of tongs, some water, and a stove top. Because we're dealing with boiling water today, the safety equipment we're going to need include goggles, heat resistant gloves, and an apron or lab coat to protect from spills or splashes. The first step in our experiment is to take some cold water and fill up our bowl. The second step of our experiment is to pour about 100 milliliters of water into the can. Turn your stove to medium high heat, and place your can with the water in it, in the center of the burner. Leave it there until you see water vapor coming out of the top. Now quickly dunk your can into the water. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. Before we heat our can, it's filled with liquid water and gaseous air molecules. Heating our can adds energy to our liquid water. The more energy we give our water molecules, the more excited they get, and the further apart the molecules spread. Once enough energy has been added to our liquid water, it changes state from a liquid to a gas. This gas is called water vapor. As our water vapor fills our can, it presses against the sides of our can, creating an increase in pressure. When we place our hot can upside down in our cold water, all the water vapor molecules that fill our can get really close together and turn into a few drops of liquid water. This liquid takes up a lot less space than a gas. Water in its liquid state doesn't exert nearly as much pressure on the inside of the can as it did in its gaseous state. At this point in our experiment, the outside atmospheric pressure is much higher than the pressure inside the can. In nature, pressures want to be balanced or in equilibrium. This imbalance causes the can to violently collapse, creating a balance between the pressure inside and outside of the can. This violent collapse toward the center of the can is called an implosion. Now that was a pretty cool science trick. When warm air expands and cold air contracts, the warm air from the can came into contact with the coldness of the water and the can actually smashed into itself. Samson would have had no trouble crushing a can like this. His strength was unequal to anyone in his time, but his pride caused him to lose his strength. Ms. Dimery is going to teach us more about Samson and how God showed us through Samson's life that when we mess up, we can get another chance. We can start over and we can do things the right way. How many of us have ever sinned or made a mistake? I see the hands, I know I see the hands, I know I see. We all have. You have been wrong before, I have been wrong before, and I know it does not feel good to admit that we made mistakes, fallen short, or have missed the mark or standard that God has called us to, but it's true. We have all sinned, and even as believers, we will continue to make mistakes. But when we do make a mistake and sin against God, does that mean that we are too far gone to be redeemed by Him? Does that mean that God will never use us again to bring glory to His name? No, of course not. Let's watch a video of a strong man named Samson who made a huge mistake but still received a blessing and answered prayer from the Lord in time of great trouble. 
stories of the Bible, Samson and Delilah. This is Samson, hey. who was the last judge of Israel. Samson was very strong, and he was supposed to bring God's people victory over their enemies, who were the Philistines. Now Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. Oh, hey there. And the Philistines came to Delilah What's going on? and convinced her to find out what the secret to Samson's strength was. Hmm. They promised her a great amount of money if she could do this. Now you're coming. Hey. Come in. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what would it take to tie you up securely? Well... Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dropped, I would become as weak as anyone else. You ain't here! So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings. <laughs> Look what I got. Go on, try. And she tied Samson up with them. Ha-ha, <laughs> see? Hello, Samson! She cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings. Let me at him! So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Hey, wait a minute. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Eh, all right. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> Let me try. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. See? Oh, no! And again, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. What? Where? Let me at him. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Then Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? All right, I'll tell you. Samson replied, If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with a loom shuttle, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> now we got him. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. <laughs> Again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Ah, let me at him. But Samson woke up and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. You gotta be kidding me. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? Eh, hey, come on. No. You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. All right, all right. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as anyone else. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, you. So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned. Oh, Samson. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep. Psst. And then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. Samson's strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. <laughs> when he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. Oh, wh what's going on? But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and took him to prison. 
Samson was a strong and mighty man. Now, for some background info on Samson, Samson was a son of Manoah and his wife, but his wife was barren and was unable to have a child. But an angel of the Lord appeared and told them that they indeed will birth a son and no razor should come upon his head and he will be dedicated to the Lord from birth. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, that's not what it says. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and before you were born, I set you apart as a prophet to the nations. The Lord has a plan for all of our lives even before our parents even knew we would exist. Samson was set apart from birth to do the will of the Lord and he was to do it until his death. As Samson grew, the Lord blessed him and he had incredible strength, explosive strength. This strength didn't come from lifting weights in the gym or drinking protein shakes, but it came from God. Though Samson was blessed, and set apart his life did not always reflect that truth. Him telling Delilah the secret to his strength was his biggest mistake to date, and it led him to being captured by the Philistines. Samson was being held captive by the Philistines. He asked the Lord for revenge on the Philistines for all they had done to him. He asked the Lord to strengthen him once more so that he could push down the walls of the temple and die with the Philistines. This was Samson's last request and prayer to the Lord and the Lord answered his prayer. John 14, 13 says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Samson took the opportunity he had to make his request known to the Father, as we all should. God gave Samson strength one more time so that he could defeat the enemies of God and bring him glory even at the very end of his life. Though Samson did not always do everything right, the Lord still saw it fit to answer his prayer and bless him. God miraculously granted Samson with the opportunity to defeat his enemies at the end of his life. The Bible says that Samson killed many more when he died than when he lived. That was only able to happen through the power of God that was displayed for all to see. In conclusion, the Lord is faithful even in our shortcomings. And we should have faith to know that God can redeem us over and over and over again, even when we mess up really, really badly. We are not beyond God's redemption power. God's power will always be shown for his glory and his glory alone. Wasn't that such a great story? And if you remember nothing else from it, I want you to remember these three key takeaways. One, God gives us strength. Two, ask God. Three, God redeems his children. We just talked about a really strong man named Samson, but do you know who is even stronger than Samson? Like a lot stronger than Samson? Jesus, and Jesus took away the sins of the world and he is in heaven with the Father and he wants to have a relationship with you. And you can do that by confessing with your mouth. So Romans 10, 9 through 11 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from death, then you will be saved. We believe with our hearts and so we are made right with God and we declare with our mouths to say that we believe and so we are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be disappointed. Now, if you just did that, I want to welcome you to the family and body of Christ. We are really family now. We like, we blood. We really blood. And you can reach out to the email in the info uh, for more information and guidance to help you walk out this walk. 
Thank you for tuning in to Fresh Future TV. I hope to see you next week. And stay blessed. Be blessed. Hasta luego. Bye bye. Ciao. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Fresh Future, let's pray. I am a king's kid. I am called by God to do good works. The word guides me and Holy Spirit teaches me. I will love God's people. I will be a disciple. I will make disciples. I will do your will. Send me, I'll go. In Jesus name we pray, amen.